What is the inverse of an exponential curve? Well, Irene, that's a pretty good question. Hey, and we, uh, the inverse of an exponential so function, function, actually yeah. it's called a log graph, but many students battle with this. So let's, let's look at that question. What is the inverse of an exponential function? Okay, now firstly, an exponential function, do you recognize it as y equals two to the x? Mm -hmm. Okay, with that little x up top there, an exponent up top there, and we wanna draw that graph. Okay, now I always say to students, when in doubt, use a table. Okay, draw a little picture. You know, seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Mbui? Yes, I yeah. agree. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at this. Fx is equal to two to the x. Well, that's the same as y equals two to the exponent x. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some x values. Now what I do is I choose negative one, naught, and one. Okay, pretty cool. Now what do you girls think? Okay, now if x is equal to negative one, what would be two to the exponent negative one, two to the negative one. Ooh, that would be a half. Yeah, you see, Irene, you see, she's, you know, she, Irene for president. I think she'll make a good, we need a lady president, don't we you do, agree? We do, hey. I think it'll be a good looking lady, you know? Hey, what do you say? All right, two to the naught, you wanna have a go? It would be one. Yeah, some zanzi, S-A-B-C, one, and we? Two to the naught is one, okay. And what's two to the one? Two to two. You've got to believe it. You see, you you guys are pretty good at maths here. So now once we've got that, people, all we need to do is draw the graph. We've got the x values, and let's have a look at the y. So let's plot it. If we go there, negative one, a half. Okay, naught, one, and one, two. X is one and two, and then all you do there is you draw the exponential graph. And what do you call, let's see if you girls are clever, um, the line that's not touched, the x-axis, there's a funny word that they talk about it. Do you know that word? Yes. What is it? Line of sim I mean, yeah, asymptote. asymptote. An asymptote. asymptote, yes, yes. Okay, what a funny word, asymptote. <laughs> Sounds like, you know, M&M coming to the <laughs> Yeah, today we're gonna do an asymptotic <laughs> function. Yeah, an asymptote, yeah, <laughs> you agree? Okay, so here we go. Now watch this, watch this. This has gotta be easy. You've got your x's and your y's. Now guys, how do we get the inverse of an exponential? Swap the x and y around. So all you do, you've got your table, so in other words, there's the F graph, the X is swapped around with the Y. So let's do it to the table. We call that the inverse graph. Now look at that, that was the top row was X, the bottom was your Y values. Now swap the X and Y around. Look how easy that is. You see guys, maths are so easy. Don't let them tell you it's difficult. You know what I mean? <laughs> maths is easy. Now watch it. Once you've got that, you simply swap the X and Y around. So have a look at this. Minus one and a half becomes a half negative one. Naught one, one naught. One, two, two, one. And this is called the line of symmetry. I think you mentioned that. Okay, and you've got Y equals X. So what do you think? The line is a reflection, the exponential graph is a reflection um, about the Inverse. Uh, the line y equals x. So we've got x equals two to the exponent y. These, the inverse of the exponential is what we call a log graph, or x equals two to the y. But, but what is this thing called log? Now all we've got to do is solve for y. Okay, and there was a funny man, a very good man. He, he, he was called Napier. Okay, he discovered logarithms. Interesting that Napier was also sort of the father of the computer, you know, that we know today. Now look what he did. He said if a number equals a base to exponent, then what we do is we introduce this funny word called log. The base goes to here of the number is equal to exponent. So if nine equals three squared, which is true, three squared is nine. When you introduce log form, have a look at this. What we do is notice the base is three, so I introduce log nine to base three is equal to two, the exponent. In other words, if you've got nine equals three squared, the exponent is two. Another way of writing the exponent is two, is log nine to base three. See how easy that is? Mm -hmm. So if the base is, is three, you can introduce a log and you've got nine is equal to three squared, log nine to base three is equal to two. So when we take this, this graph and we invert it, okay, now we've got y as the exponent and we want y to be, they call it the subject of the formula, that's very complicated. All you've got to do is solve for y. We want to bring y down and y says to two, listen, you're getting in my way, 
You're such a base thing, you. you know. <laughs> okay. You're gonna go there, and you're gonna go to the other side, and we introduce a little log, and there's x to base two. So he goes underneath there. All right, and y is equal to it. Now that's the log graph. Now look at that. So we've got the inverse is log x to base two. All right. Now have a look at another one. What if we go a half to the x? Okay, let's pick some x values. Y is equal to half to the x minus one naught and one. Now here's a trick one. What is a half to the negative one? Half to the negative one. Two. 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 Okay, half to the negative one is actually two there, you see. So if we do that, let's write that in. A half mm -hmm. to the negative one um, is gonna be two. So let's write that in two there. What's a half to the naught? One. one and a half to the one? Half. A half. So you see, you can write that in, and once you've got it there, it's pretty, pretty cool because then we can then draw the graph of these things. Okay. Now have a look at this. If you take this, if you take there's your inverse there, you swap it around, and there's your y value. Look at that. And you've got these. Now all we do is we plot these things. Okay. And we swap the x and y around, and have a look there. Minus one, two becomes two, negative one. Mm -hmm. Naught one, one naught half one, one and a half, and there's the this little inverse graph. And notice the reflections about y equals x, x, that line. And of course, if we want to introduce the log form, okay, there we go, x is equal to a half to the y, log x to base a half is y, the half goes underneath as a base, and there you've got it there. You see how simple this is? So you've got two kinds of graphs. So all you do, listen to me, y equals two to the x, x equals two to the y, so it can be a half as well. Then you, you simply get a table, you've got your x's, your y's, and you simply do this, y, and swap the y and the x around, and you get it, and you get these graphs in. Now look at this carefully. If you take the graphs, let's just summarize this. If you've got the line y equals x, that's the line of reflection. Okay, what about that graph? Do you notice that it was, if you move from left to right, what is it doing? It's increasing, do you see? And, and you've got naught one there, okay. And that's y equals a to the x, a is any base. And we'll look at that, that's the inverse, it's also increasing. And that will be one naught, it cuts there, and that's the log graph. And we know it's an increasing function, both of them are increasing as you move from left to right. And what do you know, a must be bigger than one. So in other words, it's two to the x, three to the x, that kind of thing. Okay, and then if you go to the decreasing guys, now watch this, if you come down, that's decreasing, that's gonna be naught one. Then that's the y equals a to the x. Decreasing, that's the log graph. Okay, and these are called decreasing functions. And your base is always a fraction between naught and one. Okay, that's where the half came from. So watch out for that. Now that is all it is. The inverse of an exponential is a log graph. Pretty straightforward. Please explain how we calculate N in the compound interest formula done in grade 11. Absolutely, Bernadette, brilliant question. You can see you're gonna be an accountant is where do you use financial maths in the real world? Where do we use logs? Okay, it's all very well drawing these graphs, but where do we actually use it? Now I've got two amazing questions. The one is in financial maths, check this out. Now watch this, Bernadette, to answer your question. Shane invests 20,000 Rand into an account paying 8% per annum, compounded annually. How long will it take for the investment to double? Well, firstly, I would tell Shane to rather invest somewhere else <laughs> because that's not a very good interest rate, 8%. You know, it's, 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 it's quite a good one, but 8%, you wanna rather do something else, okay. So let's see if we can make Shane rich. Should we try that? Mm -hmm. Using logs, here's the solution to Shane's problem, logs. How long will it take for 20,000 Rand to become 40,000 Rand? Well, do you remember that formula from grade 10 and 11? A is equal to P1 plus R10. So in other words, what we're doing is we're taking the 20,000, that's your P, and we wanna double it. P is the present amount, and A is your accumulated amount. This is what you're gonna do in accounting. Okay, and the interest rate, remember, 8% is eight divided by 100, naught comma naught eight annually. Watch out for compounded monthly and all those things, very important. And we wanna find N. Okay, now that is what you didn't do in grade 10 and 11, is how do we find N? Well, one thing we could do is divide both sides by 20,000. 
Okay, now what is 40,000 divided by 20,000 is gonna give you two. Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at this. Two is equal to one comma zero eight to the exponent n. How do we solve for n? Now this is real world. Shane's got 20,000 Rand. He wants to double the money. How long will it take him at a given interest rate? That's a cool question. Now have a look here. What we do is we introduce logs. Look at that. Log two to base one comma zero eight is n. And if you use your calculator, if you simply go, you, there's a button that deals with this on the calculator, the log button, look at this, nine comma something, which gives us approximately about nine years to double. Damn. Pretty good, eh? You can see how logs is used in the real world. Do you see there? Shane wants to know how much, must, or how long will it take for his money to double? And look at that, it helps you, isn't that amazing? You can do a calculation in Bui. When you win the lotto, when he wins a million rand, we can do some logarithms here, and we can teach him how to make some money here. Now, here's another question, watch this. It has been established, this is for, for Irene who wants to do medicine. It's been established that there are new strains of bacteria which are immune to modern day antibiotics. That's scary. This could have dreadful implications for the human race, particularly if these, da if these dangerous so-called superbugs are not able to be treated by modern medicine. You know, they say in the hospitals that you get these bugs that are immune to, it's a true thing. There was a big story about bugs that actually are immune to antibiotics. We, we sometimes fill ourselves with all these antibiotics and that can be dangerous. Now, how do we use logs in the situation? Have a look here. In an experiment on a particular strain of these superbugs, a scientist determined that the number of bacteria N in a culture increases exponentially. You see how the exponential graph happens here? After T days, according to this formula, after how many days will there be 10,000 superbugs in the culture? Okay, the scientists wanna know what are we gonna do about this bug? Now check this out, watch how we use logs. There's your little formula that they ascertained. We N is the number of bugs, and we wanna know in how many days what, what, you know, will these things reach 10,000? Have a look here. Well, what's 10,000 divided by, you know, uh, 50 is 200. Now look at this. The, the scientists can establish log 200 to base two. If you introduce the log form, you see there, mm -hmm. it will take about seven comma six. So it's around about, on about seven, eight days mm -hmm. for these bugs to reach 10,000. Very, very important to understand that. So it's about eight days, let's say. So can you see how logs can be used in medicine, in finance, really good real world applications. And they can say in eight days, we better do something, otherwise these bugs are gonna start affecting us. And fortunately, that's what science does. It enables us to solve problems. But you can see maths in the real world, the log used in finance and in medicine. Isn't that brilliant?